Good evening, everyone, and welcome to One Healthy Boston's Facebook Live. I'm Kristen Perfetio. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight's topic is Wound Care 101, Knowing the Basics. Our bodies are designed to heal themselves quickly and to ward off infection. We can help them do this by knowing the basics of proper wound care, learning to properly identify the severity of wounds, and by seeking medical attention when natural healing is not enough. And tonight we are joined by Dr. Gary Gibbons, an expert on wound care and vascular surgery at South Shore Hospital. Tonight, Ms. Uh, Dr. Gibbons is going to talk about proper wound care and how it looks, the red flags of what to watch out for when it's not healing properly, and where to find help when your wound just won't heal. Dr. Gibbons, thank you so much for joining us thank tonight. Thank you for having me. We are thrilled to have you. You are renowned in your <laughs> field, and I know that I'm certainly not exaggerating on that. We, I want to get right into this because I think we're going to get some good questions tonight. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about what proper wound care looks like. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, I think... Uh, the, the whole thing is identifying wounds because we tend to take it for granted. You get a scratch, it's going to heal. The old wives' tale, leave it open. Um, I think the most important thing nowadays is, uh, first of all, if you get an opening in your skin or the mucous membrane, uh, you want to first wash your hands, uh, wash the wound. Unlike the old days, I think it's more important to cover a wound uh, and, and keep it covered. Don't let it open to the air and just kind of like basic care. Don't take anything for granted. So are there different types of wounds that people should be looking for? I mean, is, are there degrees, I guess, right. of wounds? There are. Um, I think uh, we have trauma wounds uh, or surgical wounds, but uh, in the weather uh, where it's been so warm this winter, we've seen a lot more trauma wounds, car doors, mm. uh, people bumping into things, uh, venous leg ulcers, uh, diabetic ulcers, uh, radiation injuries, uh, uh, wounds associated with cancers. So there's a wide variety of wounds that uh, people need to pay attention to. And at what point does someone look at their wound and assess, like, Ooh, I, I, I'm, I've done all I can here at home. I, maybe I should see someone like yourself. Right. I think uh, it really depends on the knowledge uh, and the uh, who's looking at the wound, who's caring for the wound. Uh, families are certainly uh, important, but normally a wound follows a normal trajectory of healing. The body is unbelievable at, at how it, it works to heal a wound. And I think if you have uh, more pain, uh, obviously if it gets red, uh, if you see any red lines, fever, chills, I think that's when you want to seek attention. Okay. You, you talk um, just earlier there about that the, the body is just really amazing about healing. Tell us about the steps of healing. I mean, sure. what, what, are, what is our body capable of? Well, the body, if you look at a wound, if, if we've all had cuts from being, when we were kids and everything. If you look at it, though, the, usually most wounds will heal within five to seven days, not heal maturation with a scar, but the wound will be closed. So the body, it's, it's processes and synergies that take a wound from you immediately get a wound. Uh, you got to stop the bleeding mm -hmm. first, so that we call that uh, bleeding control. And then the body uh, has, goes through stages of healing, so you have an inflammatory stage uh, where the cells go in and remove bacteria clean wounds out if you have stepped on something or wood or something that uh, is in the wound, the body, the inflammatory state, the body goes in and cleans the wound out. Then the body shifts to a proliferative phase where the healing cells, chemicals, uh, growth factors, all of these things come and work together with our cells in our body 
to m promote uh, wound healing. And then once the wound is healed, you have a maturation phase where that wound matures. It all heals by scarring, except now with some advanced wound healing products that we have where you can heal more by regenerative therapy. But by and large, most wounds will heal by a scar. Okay, and, and again, that process takes five to seven days for a wound to close Roughly. and heal? Yep. And the scar included? No. no. I mean, so the, the scarring the scab can take. Is what I yep. say. The yeah. scab. What you're hoping to do is not have a real scab unless you have a real. You know, you've you've hit the uh, sidewalk or the pavement, uh, but you'll you'll have a wound. Uh, you'll see it close, so there's no uh, more liquid, uh, and uh, that is usually about seven days, and then the scar forms, and then the scar has to mature. And because what you're trying to do is seek an, uh, anatomical and functional integrity. So you want to get as close to what you had to begin with, mm -hmm. and you want it to function. Okay. And uh, no matter what, though, you, you heal by scarring for the most part. Okay. Okay. So what steps should you do to treat a wound um, at home or on your own? Well, I think the first thing is identifying that you have a wound. Uh, and um, that's very difficult for some of our diabetic patients who don't have sensation, but identify the wound and what is, how deep do you think it is? Can you stop the bleeding? I think the most important thing right off the bat is wash your hands, soap and water. I think it, uh, I prefer to have people wash wounds with soap, water, and a face cloth and then rinse it. Mm -hmm. and then cover the wound immediately, assess the situation. If, if it, it depends on where it is in the body too. Mm -hmm. If you can't move something, then you've probably got a deeper wound than you think. Or if you can look in the wound and you see some other things, you probably want to get attention earlier. Okay, okay, so wash your hands, stop the bleeding, clean the wound, cover the wound. Yep, you can use a little antibiotic ointment, but cover the wound. Okay, and how, how, um, I, I don't, I'm trying to use the word, is it not hard, or how tight should you cover the wound? I mean, <laughs> you don't want to cover it very tightly at the beginning because part of the inflammation, that first part, you're going to have swelling. Okay. So you don't want to, and we see time and time again where people have really wrapped it so tightly that they, they, they create a tourniquet effect. Mm -hmm. So I like just a loose dressing at the beginning. Um, if they have something in the lower extremity and it's called a venous ulcer where they have so much swelling, then we're going to wrap them and compress it, but not right at the beginning. Okay. We want to welcome our viewers at home to send in any questions. We're talking with Dr. Gary Gibbons about wound care here and uh, how to take care properly of a wound. We did get a comment from Cindy. She says that your wound care center is great. Sounds like, again, a fan from home. Thank you, Cindy. She wants to know, oh, actually, she said, if someone lives elsewhere, what should they look for if they can't attend your wound center or get to your wound center? Um, first of all, they can, so you <laughs> don't need a referral, okay. seriously, uh, and that's important. Everyone thinks nowadays you have to have a referral from your insurance. You can make an appointment. We have two great navigators and actually a staff that will sort out what's the seriousness of the wound. So we treat patients, uh, patients with wounds. We don't treat wounds. So what do they have? Really some... Um, what do you have? Do you, if you have certain things, it may be better to come to a, 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 a center like ours uh, if it's not going in the right direction. I think what makes the, our center great is the people there, uh, the nurses. We, we treat patients with wounds, so they become, you know, they're in our community for the most part, um, and it is just a great team approach. Um, and I think that's what our name uh, is about, is that we're going to take care of you as a person, get you healed, and then try to provide education and then prevention to try to keep it from happening again. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, your center is not necessarily seeing wounds where someone cut their hand this week and they're coming in no, for treatment. Oh, you all do that wounds, as well? Yeah. Okay, so I, I was under the impression that it was a wound that hasn't healed for a really long time. No, that is one of our, you know, why we're also there, but we will, we have, 
probably three or four walk-ins a day. Really? Yeah. Okay. We don't turn anyone down. Uh, we try to navigate them through is what is the urgency of being seen. Uh, we will see all diabetics within 24 hours. No kidding. So we'll navigate what we think is how serious is it, working as a team, who's going to see them, um, what time can we see them, because you average 100 patients a day, mm -hmm. um, we got to fit them in. Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic. You've seen patients from all over the world and the country, right? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, some of the extreme wounds that you have seen that you've helped take care of so you can give people a picture at home of what sure. you do? Um, I think recently one of our greatest success stories, if you will, and, you know, you don't win them all, but uh, was a Vietnam veteran who had a wound for 47 years. Wow. In and out of the hospital, uh, veterans hospitals, uh, medical centers, had more surgeries on his leg, um, and was told, um, when you're ready, we need to amputate your leg. And he then was admitted uh, actually to South Shore with a severe life-threatening infection from that wound, and uh, they called us, we saw him, and we used a multi-modality of therapies and we healed them after having a wound for 47 years. Wow, yeah. talk about, it almost sounds like a miracle. Um, <laughs> it's really, it's a team because you're focusing on why that wound didn't heal and I think that was our benefit is working with everyone together uh, that we could really find out why wasn't that healing and then the multimodality therapy where we combined a number of therapeutics uh, to get him healed. Mm -hmm. And then one of our other ones was a uh, wonderful uh, type 1 diabetic um, who had a kidney transplant from her sister, had already had an amputation of one of her legs and came in mm -hmm. with a horrible infection of her foot and um, didn't know what to do because she didn't want to lose the transplant. Mm -hmm. And by working with her, we tried the simple things first, but she ended up, um, and again, with our, we have podiatric surgeons, vascular surgeons, plastic surgeons, incredible group of nurses where we understood her, and it was really, I think the most important was spending time with her and convincing her that saving that other leg was going to be very important for her mobility mm. and her functionality, sure. quality of life. So working, she had a, uh, um, a uh, vas revascularization and then some uh, podiatric surgeries and then some advanced surgeries and she's remained healed for two years now so far, so. Wow, wow. fantastic. You mentioned that you have a, a number of multi-modalities. Uh, you know, tell me about how that works. I mean, how does vascular surgery come into play with wound healing and, and all of those other, uh, just sure. walk me through it. Okay, so the, the most important thing early on is when you, someone has a wound is what's behind it. Mm. So we're always feeling for pulses. What is the circulation doing? Both the arterial circulation, the venous circulation, the lymphatic circulation, there's a lot going on. So if you look at diabetics in particular, 50% of diabetic uh, lower extremity wounds will have a circulation component to mm -hmm. them. And uh, sometimes venous, but the majority of that is some arterial. So arteries bring blood down, veins take blood back, and the majority of these, we call them our mixed arterial venous ulcers. So you have to do a very careful assessment. We do a number of tests in the clinic. The nurses are, they can do a vascular exam as good as I can. Uh, <laughs> and because that's what we're really looking at. We're playing the detective now is what is going on. Even if they came in with a laceration that happened yesterday, what's the circulation? How deep is this? Do they have function? Uh, so you really want to assess the wound. Um, and then how are we going to get it closed? What are the other... So do they need an x-ray? Do they need uh, more imaging? What are the things we need mm -hmm. to do? And then you get into, <clears throat> you know, 
do they have heart issues? Uh, do they have kidney issues? What are the other things that they have? Edema. Uh, uh, so the average number of other conditions that the patients we see average is seven to 14. Wow. So patients are living longer. Uh, so they're living with more uh, other conditions that, and those things affect wound healing. Okay. Uh, you know, we yeah. don't think that, but mm. again, we gotta remember patients are living longer sure. and they get a wound. And so now all these other things affect the wound yeah. and how to get it healed. Now, that, that was a question that I have, you know, how, how much does lifestyle play into wound healing? You know, good nutrition, physical fitness, um, alcohol use, smoking, yeah. those types of things. All of those things play an enormous uh, uh, importance in wound healing. I think um, certainly nutrition, we know about elders and many of the uh, older Americans are malnourished. Um, we know that uh, you know, uh, nutrition is a big part of what we do. Uh, diabetes control, co mm -hmm. controlling all the, the other um, complications. Edema is a big one. Okay. I think one of the biggest thing we've seen, I call it diabesity, the obesity mm -hmm. epidemic, diabetes. These people are at more at risk for developing a wound. And okay. We want to really get at those people earlier and then prevent another one from happening. Sure, sure. We've got some questions, which is great. Um, Donna at home has asked, well, she said that's awesome about the Vietnam story. Um, are stories like that common? And um, can you, if you can, could just give a little recap? I think she might have missed a little bit of it, but. Um, we, it, it, that was the oldest wound. This was a Vietnam veteran who had been everywhere, number of different treatments. I think what we did is first look at what had been done and what was missing. And I think part of the thing we found with him too was controlling his swelling, his edema. Um, but um, I think it's not uncommon. I think we, while we see acute wounds, we see, uh, because of who we are, we see a lot of wounds that have been going on for six months. Unfortunately, people will live with a wound or, or have treatment that's gone on for six months. Mm -hmm. The wound is getting larger and they just, I, I don't know, you know, you wish people would come in earlier, but mm -hmm. they're doing all the right things. If those things aren't going in the right direction, then they need help. If it's not from us, then someone who knows about wound care, who who has a knowledge base that can help get them healed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Henry wants to know, what do I need at home for my kids and family? So I'm thinking Henry wants question. to know that the, uh, the step on the nail, the crack of the head, yep. the cut on the knife, that kind of thing. I think, um, what do you need at home? You, I think you need Band-Aids. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Um, I think the one thing I want to stress is just really good hygiene. Mm. So washing hands, making sure you clean the wound immediately, uh, and uh, you can have an antibiotic ointment at home. I don't think you need to have a big pharmacy. Okay. I think you, someone's got to be uh, strong enough to look at the wound and not get the queasies. You know, <laughs> okay, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, just cleanliness, uh, I would have some gauze pads, maybe uh, some stockinette, which is an elastic stocking. Uh, there's, there's gauze bandages. Uh, with kids, I would have that on stock. Okay, okay. What about like the butterfly stitches and things like that? Should people even be messing with that or should they, if they think it's deep enough, should they just be going to urgent care at that point? I think uh, I do. Um, we see a number of people coming in who self-applied butterflies. Mm. I think it's a great attempt. I think there's a lot more we can do today with people. Um, we see a lot of skin tears, okay. especially in the older population. People fall, they get scratched, they hit uh, the refrigerators, the, mm. the dishwashers, car doors, and they have what's called a flap. And uh, part of the skin will be buried deep in the wound. And if they're seen early on, we can repair those and actually close the wound. Okay. So I think if there's any question 
or concern, you know, maybe start with your urgent care, your primary care. And if there's any question, you know, call us, have the primary care, call us. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you think it's simple, try it at home and then follow the things we talked about earlier is making mm -hmm. sure they don't have a temperature, um, that it's not red, uh, they're not feeling lousy or the wound starts uh, really oozing yeah. what we call pus and yeah. uh, just what the wound is doing. Yeah. Are there certain wounds that are harder to treat than others? When you say skin tear, I, to yep. me that seems so almost paper thin, so difficult to treat. Right. Is that harder than the, uh, the typical cut at home? Or I, I think it is because as we get older, we lose the elasticity in our okay. skin. So uh, the skin tears tend to be more common, mm -hmm. but, and I think that's different than the ordinary cut at home, which if you really wash it out, cover it, you, you just want to watch it. Okay. You say to cover it, and, and I think I agree with you on this, but what, what about the old adage where people say, oh, let it breathe. You got to let it breathe. Yep. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is, you know, if you have an open wound, that's subject to bacteria getting into the wound. Okay. And, you know, bacteria are everywhere. I think that was an old wives' tale of leave it open to air, it'll mm -hmm. scab, and you want to scab. You really want to get the edges of the wound together if you can. And the most important thing is for healing, what we've learned over time, is you want to keep a moistened wound environment. You don't want a dry scab. Okay. Actually, when it dries out, um, that has the cells die, and that also is a um, it, it keeps wounds from healing. They have cells and chemicals that keep the wound from healing. So the the real thing today is to keep the wound moist. Okay. That's interesting because I, in my head, think that, you know, keeping it dry would be the more natural yeah. way to kind of get all that bacteria out and just... Right. Um, what about like salt water or ocean water or anything like that for wounds? So we don't soak wounds, okay. especially in our diabetic patients because uh, they can't feel okay. and they think if they soak it in a little hot water and the hotter the better, uh, and this is the time of year where we see burns. They put it next to a space heater or a fireplace. So we're not big soakers. I'd rather have you cleanse the wound uh, and then put a, a moistened dressing on it. I think, you know, we're learning wound care is still a very young specialty. Mm -hmm. And I think what we've learned through time is we've, uh, you know, we can examine wounds under the microscope and how the healing is going, that moistened wounds are able to heal better because they're able to attract the cells and the chemicals that are needed to promote healing. Okay, interesting. Katie wants to know, why go to a wound center instead of the emergency room? That's a great question, uh, Katie, and the reason going to the wound center, uh, you're going to wait six or seven hours in a lot of emergency rooms. Um, you'll wait in some wound centers, but I think the expertise and the knowledge base that our nurses, all of our providers have, can better address the particular wound that you have. and. We're trying to keep people out of the emergency rooms now and really where the care is, is uh, more efficient and not that it's higher quality, but that's what we do. And then we can get you back to your primary, but it's not just treating the wound, it's treating a patient with the wound mm -hmm. and understanding all the dynamics going on with that patient of where this wound may be a problem. And then you can arrange the follow-up. If you go to the emergency room, you're probably gonna get referred someplace sure. else afterwards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was a great question. Thank you, Katie, for writing in. We do want to remind our viewers at home to send in your questions. We're talking with Dr. Gary Gibbons this evening about wound care and how to treat a wound at home. And for those who maybe have been living with wounds for a long time, um, Dr. Gibbons can talk about some of the specialty care that's out there to help heal those wounds. We do have a question from Michael, and Michael wants to know, should my wound be open or air uh, to air or covered? And we just talked about that, right. but maybe we can talk a little further about it. I like, I prefer covering wounds. I think uh, especially over pressure points like elbows, knees, ankles, uh, where you can continue to injure the area and scrape it some more. 
I think, uh, as we had mentioned before, leaving something open to air is the old wives' tale, and what we've learned through better education and research is keeping them uh, a moistened wound bed, and that's generally done by covering it. Okay. Do you have any recommendations for ointments or over-the-counter meds that may help with wound healing at home? I think um, the antibiotic ointments are okay. You don't want to do too much or too little. You, a lot of people think if a little is good, a lot is better. Uh, then you can actually macerate the wound and, and okay. then it becomes soggy and you're making it just as bad. Okay. Um, some, I, I think you can have an antibiotic ointment in home. Um, there is uh, uh, preparations like uh, chlorhexidine, betadine. Uh, if you're going to do those things, you want to make sure that these aren't toxic to the tissues. So we try to avoid full strength solutions. I think some of the over the counter antiseptic solutions are good. The biggest thing is rinsing the wound and cleaning it um, and then covering it. I, I would keep it kind of basic. Okay. How often should you clean your wound? I like looking at the wound daily, depending on how that person is. If it's a young, healthy, it's your kids, you're probably going to get one look at it, and yeah. that's going to be it. But I think um, we, prefer, we uh, prefer not to do daily dressing changes. I think leave it covered if the wound is, is doing well, but make sure you look at the surrounding skin and how the patient's doing. Okay. All right. That's good to know. So don't change it several times a day. No. Okay. All right. What about, um, you know, again, some of the old school, you know, remedies like vitamin E or aloe vera plants, or I've even heard coconut oil. Turmeric right. came up on my Google search today, and I thought, wow. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> One of the na latest crazes is coconut. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think those are good for moisturizers, and you can put them on clean wounds. Um, I, I think that's the most important thing is to make sure the wound is clean. Do not let the wound dry out or let the surrounding skin dry out. So that's a particular problem in the winter because the heat's on. Mm -hmm. All of our skin tends to dry out. As we get older, we don't, uh, we don't moisturize as well. So I think all of those lubricating creams are good. Um, the, the coconut oil is good. The, uh, I would ask people to avoid the creams with uh, harsh detergents. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use antibacterials. We don't use perfumes in the soaps. Um, just keep it down to the basics because the skin will tolerate a lot, but the wound won't. Okay. What about like alcohol or peroxide or anything like that? If you dilute it, you can do it. The problem is all of the, if you use, use full strength peroxide, you hurt the tissue. Okay. So you want to dilute it down um, and make sure it's what we call isotonic with the tissue. So half and half, quarter of peroxide with either saline. I tell some people just over the counter water, just because you, the real good of all of this is the irrigation and the cleansing. Okay, okay, good to know. Um, when it comes to fighting infection in wounds, you know, how important is the tetanus shot in all this? Very. <laughs> so there probably isn't a day that goes by with people coming in with trauma wounds. We had the one this morning from a uh, piece of metal, and that was the first thing you need to get a hold of your primary, uh, find out are your tetanus, everything up to date. Okay. You got into this field for a reason. What, what, what drove you to it? Um, I'm a vascular surgeon by trade. I grew up in the Deaconess Jocelyn system, so my passion was for diabetic patients. Mm. Um, I'm a little bit older, so we got into it when vascular surgery was really just starting out, and the things that we were able to do uh, by saving... Uh, you know, restoring circulation and proper wound care in diabetics, the um, amputation prevention. We now have a limb preservation program where if you really get in there early, we can heal these patients and then with a great group prevent them as best we can from happening again. Yeah, you're doing good work. If there's anything you want to share at home with our viewers today, what's the most important takeaway message for this evening? 
Don't take wounds for granted. Okay. Um, if you're young, healthy, old and healthy, you can treat it yourself as long as, you know, you, you, you know what you're doing. Yeah, you can clean it, um, take care of it. If there's any question about it, though, uh, um, you want to seek attention. The earlier you seek attention, the better. Uh, for our diabetic patients out there, I think the earlier you get help, the better you will do. Yeah, don't wait. Don't right? wait. All right. We want to thank you so much for joining us well, tonight, Dr. Thank Gibbons. You. I learned so much. Yeah. I did. We're always learning. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Thank you so much. We want to thank all our viewers at home tonight who sent in their questions. For those of you who tuned in a little late and you may not have caught all this, you can view this Facebook Live on OneHealthyBoston.com. We want to thank you again. Thank you to our team. Thank you to Channel 5. We'll see you next month.